Welcome back, Twitch. The wizards that control the gateway have aligned <laughs> and brought us back to you through the internet. That's how the internet works, so you know. I'm Am Grimelli. I'm a partner solution architect here at AWS. We're joined by George Holt. Hi, I'm George Holt. I'm a software development manager for IDE Toolkits. Steve Roberts. Steve Roberts, technical evangelist. I'm Nikki. And Nikki. I've been here all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. Um, so, I wanted to start real quick with a, a fast story. I promise it'll be fast, I swear. Maybe not too fast. Steve, you and I, I I'm gonna take the hat off too, it's too hot. Steve, you and I actually met uh, through this VS Code extension, didn't we? We do, our fingerprints are all over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and yep. Nikki introduced us. I think it's I all actually, ties I us together. I actually, I feel like I'm, t t I, I need to be credited for like, you know, like when two people get married and there was an introduction and then Where one person going? stands up and says, I, I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. So I introduced these two. It's your And fault. they started building the VS Code toolkit. And then real people took it and made it into something usable. That's George's right. team, yeah. great job. GA today. But it was fate, right? Yeah. Fate brought us together. <laughs> fate brought us together. Yeah, it's like the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of the Avengers assembling, right? Oh. I think so. Um, so that's what we're here to talk about, right? The, the VS Code extension for AWS GA today. All right, so why don't yeah. we just jump into a demo? Sure. Oh, straight to the demo. Straight to the demo. That's, that's the best part. Let's go. Yeah, the way I like to introduce this is just by saying, hey, if you're in Visual Studio Code, you're going to probably start from the extension place. So this is on the marketplace today. Absolutely. Yep. And you would search for AWS Toolkit. Click this, install. I've already installed. I've got some experience with it. Um, That's good to know. So that gives us so that wait, wait, AWS wait, entry, right? What yeah? happens though if you install and you've never set up a toolkit on your machine before and you have no AWS credentials saved anywhere? Well, then you have to set up your credentials. Okay, right, but does it All walk right. me through the process or am I figuring it out for myself? Well, These are important things I need to know. Let's gotcha. see. So we've got that AWS entry on the, the uh, Explorer bar now, okay? Looking good. All right. So what I would probably do is view the quick start. This kind of takes you like the, the really brief walkthrough shows you the command palette if you're not familiar with VS Code. So I mean, like I know what happens is basically after you install it, if you do not have credentials on your computer, that little like lovely notification service in VS Code pops up in the right hand corner and says, we have not detected credentials. Mm -hmm. Would you like to set up credentials, right? And then it continues to walk you through the process and then actually creates the uh, .aws file under your user and does the whole thing for you. Awesome. Okay, so it makes it easy to get started then. Yeah, All right. super I easy if you do not have an AWS account set up with your machine. When you drop that down, you had to connect to AWS. So I guess it's driving through that, right? But the other thing I notice mm -hmm. is this is showing in that Explorer multiple regions. Yes, right? this is something that we're experimenting with. Okay. Um, we definitely want feedback from customers about if this is useful. Um, we've heard from customers that, hey, I can't find all my stuff. We've also heard from customers Hey, I, there's too much stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking at customers to know how you want to view your resources. Do you want to view them all at once? Okay. That's and that really goes to the heart of this toolkit, right? It's, we open source this like, from day one when we announced it at reInvent last year. And it's being developed in the open. I mean, it's targeting serverless workflows and development today. But we're interested in where is this going to go, right? What do you want it to do? How do you want it to do it? You know, get involved, et cetera. Yeah, that's the idea. Co yeah. Completely cool. focused on the customers, listening exactly what they have to say because all we have to do is they go win. to GitHub and look at the issues and they're there. Yeah. So. so we have a quick question yeah. from the audience. Uh, Raj, ITR, Raj, I don't know how to say that, says, how does it handle multiple credentials? Maybe you have multiple profiles um, in your credentials file. So if you have multiple credentials set up in your credentials file, Rajit R, apologies. <laughs> you can switch between them from okay. the spot where my mouse is. But I don't oh, have so in the bottom right-hand corner. Yes. Okay, all right. So why don't we walk through development of a 
I don't know, hello world. Yeah, let's app. start from yeah? scratch. Start from scratch. So I'll close this window here. There's a couple different ways you could go at it. You could go at this way from create new SAM application. Okay. The toolkit right now is focused on serverless applications. Okay. Yeah, that actually answers a question Capabot TV had was, are we focused on serverless apps for this extension? And the answer is yes. Yes, yes. we are. That's where we're starting. Right. Or you can open the command palette here. Okay. And create a new SAM application. Let's see, how about .NET Core? Whoa, good choice. It's a win for me. Okay, let's see, select a folder. Where do I want this workspace to be? How about in source? Create a new folder real quick. Okay, so we're creating a folder. Okay, to if put there's the a question in. about whether or not this is live, this is live. <laughs> this is like, live. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna like hold up my computer. If I had today's newspaper, <laughs> I would like. Here. Maybe I should like you know do some things is that I wouldn't normally do. What's a newspaper? This <laughs> live. Yeah, I don't know. Do people use those still? Now I click the is this live folder. V Nights okay. Pump. Um, this is an extension called the AWS Toolkit for okay. VS Code. You can install it straight from the extensions library in VS Code. Yeah. Okay, so we created a new what project. what he did, like five minutes ago. So right now what it's doing is it's actually invoking the SAM CLI for you. So this uses the SAM CLI under the covers to do all the work, even though it's .NET Core? Yes. Yeah, so awesome. Okay. If you're used to doing this command line, you can keep doing it in the command line. If you're right. wanting to do the same exact thing in the, in the actual IDE, all right. you can do it from there. So the first thing we pop up mm -hmm. in your face is template.yaml, this is kind of the heart of a SAM application. So this is a serverless template for deployment, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm going to go over here to the files view here. Crack open the source folder. And okay, so a regular a .NET Core project. Yeah. OK. This is just general boil, boilerplate for a, a C-sharp yep. Lambda. Now, one of the things that we're doing uniquely here, this is also something that we're trying out and we want to hear feedback on, is okay. We're trying to do things and make it feel like they belong in a particular IDE. So a lot of the things that we do in VS Code are meant to be VS Code-y. So we follow the gestures of the host environment. Yes. Right, OK. So you can see here we're using code lenses, which, which okay. might not be something that people are normally accustomed to. All right. But if you want to debug locally. Oh, so this is actually detecting my Lambda function handlers and putting code lenses on them. Yes. For running. Nice. So all I did was click debug locally. Okay. It's building the SAM app. All right. On an image. It'll take a little while. It's a live demo, so you know, let's be be patient. It's the internet. <laughs> this is the part where you you clench a little, right? <laughs> and you you make a sacrifice to whatever deity you believe in, and uh, hope that it look. Uh, it, there's movement. Yep, yep. It's right. downloading. So this is downloading what right now? VS Debugger? Yep. Oh my god. I'm really, really questioning whether or not it's live. Like, <laughs> I've, I've been asked to put a shoe on your head just to verify my, that it's my live. My head. On your head? Maybe it's no. his head. I don't know. Somebody's Who, head. Everybody shoots Shoes. on their head. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, live. Right. <laughs> just to verify. Additionally, in case you were wondering, yeah. it's definitely live. Okay, so the debug is down. Yeah. Uh, what are we up to now? Did it just run? That's it gonna did make run it great because I didn't later. set a breakpoint. Okay, so it just runs through. All right, so yep. yeah. So you can set as many breakpoints as you want. Yeah. There are a dime a dozen. Same thing. Now, normally, they, they teach you in demo school to set the breakpoints before you start debugging. Usually, yes. Yeah. But that's OK. We can treat the, the debug without breakpoints as a local run. Right. 
So we saw this earlier when we were, we were talking with Stackery, but uh, this is using the SAM local tools as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that LAM CI image is, is the community maintained version of the Lambda environment in a Docker uh, image. So this is the actual Lambda environment right. that's pulling down, right? Yes. It's a Docker image, yeah. So you can see here we've got locals, we've got a call stack. OK. All the normal things that you would want while you're debugging. All right. Step forward, step in, and step out. All the normal things that you can do with the normal SAM app. OK. So I've got my code perfect. Yep. Now I want to deploy my Lambda function. What, what's the process there? OK. Well, first stop debugging. Stop debugging, right. And then we're going to do control. OK, so they want to know if this Lambda is deployed in AWS or just local. So right now, it's local. But we're going to make magic happen. He's about to make magic happen. Yep. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Oh, boy. OK, so command shift P, another AWS command. Yep. 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 So now we're in the command palette again. It's kind of asking me a bunch of questions like a wizard. Okay. So it's saying, hey, uh, which, temp which SAM template would you like to deploy? So if we have multiple SAM templates loaded, it'll say, hey, which okay. one? Um, I'm going to pick the one. Let's say Ohio. Okay. Oh, Ohio. Ohio, yeah. And then? Ohio, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame region. That's how I like U to think of it. U.S. East 2? Yep, so now I'm... Oh, you're, you're just writing the bucket name. Yeah, yep. just choosing the bucket name that the, the, the deployment bundle is going to go to, right? which has to be in the same region as the deployed Lambda, right? So. Okay. And then the name for the deployed stack, my deployed stack. So it builds the app, builds the deployment bundle. The talk is doing all this for you. You don't have to do this from the command line yourself. It's just, hey, Hands I'm, the I'm working in my IDE. Just do it for me. All right? Nice. We're still using the SAM tooling. Yes. Which is Under awesome, right? Like that, that still gives us a standardized way of, of how we're used to working. Uh, we don't have to enter any commands into the terminal at all. You just hmm. kick it off. That's nice. Yeah. I like it. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. I'm, my, are you enjoying yourself, you like George? It. I'm very happy that you're you're yeah, liking this. Yeah, it's actually it's great to see this come to fruition. It is. That's you know? what I mean. It's, 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 really it's cool. cool to see the, the the new stuff that has been. Added. You went to EUS. Yep. Ohio. So while we're, while with the, while oh, this yeah. is deploying, yeah, I will show something that's already deployed. Okay, go for we're it. Getting a question, going back to the basics uh, from F. Karamazov. What even is a lambda function? I don't know if we covered that in the beginning. I think we just dove right in. But we, we do have people watching that may be not familiar with Lambda uh, at all. So maybe we should touch on what that is and why it's Good. super cool. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's compute, right? Uh, but it is on-demand compute. You don't have to pre-provision out a server mm -hmm. to run your code. Um, instead, the JSON event is populated through uh, through uh, uh, a signature, right? A method signature mm -hmm. that you declare in whatever, whatever language you're using, uh, and then you take action. Runs your code, this block of code that you've registered in this function, and uh, that's it. It spins down the the uh, the compute instance that's running it, and you don't have to worry about maintenance. You have there's no OS to patch. Uh, when it's on not your running, side, you're not getting charged. You're not so, getting charged when it's know, not running. The key thing is serverless. Yeah. So yeah. So just think of like your methods in a class just running in the cloud, triggered by an event. That's right. That's really all it is, right? OK, so you have one already deployed. Actually, it looks no, like your new yeah, one's well just we deployed. Well, we were talking already, with yeah. the new one just deployed. So let's go to that one. So let's see. Refresh here real quick. Conveniently named my deployed so stack. So we're showing cloud formation and Lambda in here. So this can be used to just single Lambda functions, as well as serverless applications, right? Yes. We can do both, development of both inside VS Code now. So you can do things like, um, let's see, if I want to delete the stack, I can delete the CloudFormation stack from right. here, which is very useful for I, demos. Very useful demos. I wouldn't do that right now, though. <laughs> right. But let's do the invoke. Because I know that inside the Visual Studio toolkit that we have, we can do an invoke of a deployed Lambda. So mm -hmm. this looks very similar. 
Let's see, hello world. So we have like, like canned, canned request data, yeah. Invoke. And the magic happens. So at this point, the Lambda service is downloading that deployed bundle, spinning it up, running it, returning the result. And I don't have to failure. curl. And you didn't have to curl. Yeah, perfect. All right, so we have a couple of minutes left. What other cool features do we have? <laughs> Going to put you on the spot. <laughs> wow, I saw like the fear <laughs> sweep over your face there for a second. For a second? Well, it's still there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. Gosh. I'm not sure. What do you think we should talk about? Well, what can we do with the stack? So, we, um, you, you so think, Jacob, the software oh, yeah. engineer, is there a plan yeah, to make this tool for other IDEs than VS Code? Yeah, we've already done so. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this toolkit is available for Visual Studio, PyCharm, uh, IntelliJ, mm -hmm. VS Code. Did I miss one? No, I don't think so. I named them all. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Actually, why don't we go to the repo, show people where the repo is. Oh, sure. That's good, because again, this, you know, this toolkit is being developed open source from day one. You know, we really want feedback, we really want pull requests, community engagement, to know Actually, where this it. toolkit should go, what should it do, even what feature better. should it add, right? I don't even have to go to my browser. You don't browser. need to go yourself, you can just go straight from the links. Like, let's even say report that an I, issue. Yeah, let's say right? that I'm annoyed by something. Yeah. Or I love something. Or you want something. Exactly. Okay. Anything. It takes you straight to a template. Okay. And you can So basically, it's super easy for people to get involved with this toolkit. They're Absolutely. interested in VS Code, and this is the way they want to do their development. Get involved. Yeah, cool. even if you can't code, like even if you're just watching this, you're right. like, you don't want to actually code on the toolkit. We want to know what you think about it. Right. We want to know yep. what things you want. Yep. Especially around that idea of surfacing all of your serverless resources in multiple regions. So, you're, so when that list came up, it showed you, you uh, when in the Explorer, you had multiple regions there already. Yes. So we, you're opting to showing those, right? It's not just determining, oh, you have lambdas in these regions. You have to go and choose which ones you want. I showed show. Canada now. Okay, Canada, ah. Canada Central. And I can hide regions as well, right? So what happens at Curiosity when a new region comes online? Because Vernon mentioned this morning that there are four new regions coming online. Will the toolkit pick it up automatically and I can just start deploying to those? Yeah, yes. nice, all right, cool. You've thought of everything so no. far. <laughs> Which is why we want feedback. Which is why we want feedback, yeah, cool. Okay. So we've learned where to go to request new things mm -hmm. and guide what we build next. Uh, maybe even help build what's next. Absolutely. That would be nice, awesome. right? Yeah. We love pull um, requests. What else? What else can we say about the, uh, the AWS toolkit for VS Snoop, Code? Snoop, Dougie Dog, JetBrains? JetBrains? JetBrains. Yeah, yeah, IntelliJ, so IntelliJ and, and PyCharm. PyCharm. Yeah. yeah, covered. Yeah, we've covered. got those. We got those. All right. Any parting words for us, George? Any, any uh, other than go download the extension, right? Well, go download the extension. <laughs> yeah, go download the extension uh, right now, right? Actually, I think. Oh, yeah, it's, yes, it's been available it's, since this morning when yeah. we announced it. Keep Twitch on in the background. Open up VS Code. Mm -hmm. go Get to the that extension and start writing serverless apps. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In VS Code. Cool. Well, thanks yeah. for joining us, George. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's time to sign off uh, for this session, but we will be back with more content. Thanks for sticking around. See we'll you guys see you in a minute. Soon.